That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. The Daily Dose of Stupid today is the media and the reaction to the shooting. So, as I'm sure that most of you are aware by this point, and I'm going to give you a few new details because we do have new details coming out, but overall, just looking at the Jacob Blake shooting and the Trayford uh, Pel uh, Pellernin, I think is the way to say it, shooting. So, with both of those, the media's reaction has just been absolutely ridiculous, rising to the level of stupid, which is why they're featured here. So just to give you a little context, I know that you may have seen it already, and I do want to give you a warning here because there is some graphic content here. So if you have small kids around, maybe avert your eyes or, or turn the video off, at least for as long as this is going to be. This is the Jacob Blake shooting that happened in Kenosha, Wisconsin. So we're going to go ahead and watch that just to give you a little background on this. And by the way, it's important to note, this particular video includes two angles. So we had the original one, that you, the one that everybody's seen. This new angle has only surfaced today. And so you see the, the same events unfolding, and they're more or less synced up with the time from the, the back end of the car. And so you can see the new angle here. So you see that Blake is down by the, the rear tire. And the police have him down, they're wrestling with him. He gets away, walks around to the other side of the car. He's going in, the police are telling him, don't, don't. And they shoot him right here. Fire about what seems to be about six or seven shots. Wow. And that's how the whole thing unfolds. Now, I'm going to show it to you one more time. So again, you see him there. They said that the police, according to the newest information that they tased him, I guess that's the reason he was on the ground, but apparently he shook it off really quick because you can see him coming around the side of the, the car right there. And the police are trying to get to him, they're telling him to stop, they grab him, he goes for it anyway, and that's when they fire right then. So, so a couple things on, on this shooting, and because there's been so much said about it, this was the correct thing to do. I know that that's uncomfortable, and I know that just like, unfortunately, police officers doing their job is very often uncomfortable to watch. A person did lose their life, and so I understand why people, you know, have a, a completely legitimate reaction to that to be averse to it, because you're supposed to, when you see somebody lose their life, even if they're a terrible person and they were losing their life in a justified manner, that's still a very, very difficult and even traumatic thing to watch. I, I get that. I totally do. But the police officers acted 100% correctly here. When you're talking about police, because one of the big talking points that I've seen is, well, they shot him in the back. Well, yes, they shot him in the back. But he was reaching into his vehicle, and the police have no idea what is inside his vehicle. It could be a pack of gum. It could be a pack of mints. It could also be a knife, or a rifle, or a shotgun, or a pistol, or a bomb. I mean, there is no telling what it is, and therefore, the unknown being around this. Now, if you are just, you know, reaching into your pocket or reaching into your purse or something like that, and you've had no interaction with the police and the police just shot you, obviously that would be ridiculous. When you have police officers that have already told you to get down, they've already tased you and you shook it off, and they've already tried to grab you, tell you to stop, warned you to stop, yelled at you to stop, have their guns trained on you, you refuse to stop, and then you turn around and reach into a space that they can't see, I'm sorry, but at that point, you have forfeited your own life because of your own stupidity. If they're telling you to freeze over and over again, and you refuse to, you get up, you walk around a car, reach in regardless of the police's orders, and reach into a space that they cannot see, then yes, they are 100% justified in ending your life. That's not a negotiable thing. And I had people that were going back and forth with me on this were saying, well, you know, they should, have, they should have to wait until they know for a fact that they're in danger. I'm sorry, but there's not a police officer in the world that has reflexes superhuman enough to see somebody produce a gun, identify it as a gun. Their brain has to go through, okay, that's a gun. Now it's okay for me to fire. If that happens, you're looking at a dead cop right there. Because 
and anybody that has studied reaction times will tell you this, that there is just no way a normal human being can take the time and the cognitive, you know, it's not long, but it is some time. There is a process there that if they're reaching into their car, that he has the time to wait, identify the object that he is getting, and then and only then fire back. And by the way, this is something that happens to police officers, thankfully not on a super regular basis, but occasionally when they do take their time, when they don't fire, when they see somebody reaching into a space that they can't see, sometimes it does result in police officers getting hurt. And there's footage of this all over the internet that you can look up at any time that you want to. And we now know a lot of the details surrounding this that aren't evident from the video. Now, frankly, just from the video, there's enough evidence to show that the police officers were acting in the correct manner. But even if you ignore the video, or I shouldn't say ignore the video, even if you were, even if you were just looking at the video, that's enough. But now we have more details that give us even more insight into where the police officers' heads were. So, first of all, we know for a fact that this was not a case of police officers just stopping some random black person because he was black, which is the way that the media often tries to cast this. It turns out that this person was called in, and the police officers were called in because he stole a person's keys. So he went into a house that he wasn't supposed to be in, stole keys that were not his, and the police officers responded to that accordingly. And during this call, and we know this because we now have the audio from this call, the dispatch there that is working with the police officer not only informs them that this person is stealing their keys, but that they have an active warrant out for their arrest, that this person has a rap sheet, and it is a person that is a sexual offender, and so they know all of these things going in. This is a person that has a history of violence, a history of assault, has a history of attacking police officers. And normally when we're talking about a rap sheet in one of these situations, even though it's interesting and it may shed some light on why the person acted the way that they did towards the cops, it doesn't really lend any credence to the reason that the police officers reacted the way that they did to the suspect. In this case, it does because we know that they already knew that. For example, when we're talking about different cases where this has taken place and somebody will say, well, the guy was a drug dealer. Okay, well, maybe he was, but the cops didn't know that, so you cannot factor that into their decision-making process. In this case, we actually can because they did know that ahead of time. That's the difference in this and most of the cases that we've talked about sort of along these same lines in the past. The police officers did know that this guy had a history of attacking police officers, which gave them even more reason and more justification to be on edge when he starts ignoring their orders, walking around a, a car, and digging into an unknown space. And here's the other thing, too. If these were a bunch of evil racist police officers that were just bloodthirsty and dying to kill a black person, why didn't they shoot him when he was down on the ground? If the goal is to kill this guy, they had the perfect opportunity to do it right then and there. Do you really think these police officers, if they just wanted to go out and kill a black man, first of all, that they would just do it? in broad daylight in a neighborhood where there's all kinds of people around and there's cameras trained on them. If they were really wanting to do this and they were some kind of, you know, closet clan members or something like that, they wouldn't do it here. And so when they do go around, you'll notice that the, they only start using lethal force when their lives are in danger, when he is putting his hand into the car. And by the way, even though we didn't know this earlier, uh, we know that his kids are in the car. Uh, well, I don't know if they're his kids or just kids in general, but kids that are somehow affiliated with him are in the vehicle at the time. What if he wasn't going for a weapon at all? What if he was just going to jump into the car and drive off? Okay, well, this guy's also somebody that has been arrested before for sexual assault. Somebody that we know, at least there's, there's a decent probability, much higher than the average person, that if he does want to drive off, he would drive off with kids that he could potentially ab abduct and then abuse. And so even if he wasn't reaching for a weapon, the idea that the cops should just let this guy drive off is absurd. But 
we turn it turns out based on the new information that we have that this guy actually did have a knife and where was the knife found in the floorboard of the driver's side of this car exactly where he was reaching now do i know for a fact that he was reaching for the knife no but it does seem really odd that a guy with a history of attacking police officers walks around ignores their orders reaches into the one place in the car that happens to have a weapon that seems like an awful big coincidence if he's not reaching for the weapon and the police officer ought not have to wait to have his arm slashed to be able to defend himself if he sees a guy like this especially but i mean any person it would be justified but especially a guy that he knows has a history of attacking police officers reaching into a vehicle like this then yes he absolutely has the right to use lethal force at that moment because if he doesn't then his life is likely to be taken from him and as sad as it is i mean yes this guy didn't do he is the he's paralyzed as the result of his own bad decisions that is accurate but it is of course sad that he is paralyzed now it's sad the situation arose but it's not nearly as sad as if this situation had played out to where this guy either abducted these kids and hurt them or he had killed the police officer it's sad but it's not as sad if i have to choose between this guy getting hurt and an innocent person getting hurt obviously the better ending to that story is him being the one that got hurt not the innocent parties here and that's why this was a justified shooting because any of those other endings are very much likely if the police officer doesn't try to end his life here and i'm glad that his life wasn't ended i'm glad that he's only paralyzed but he had to figure out a way to stop him at this point because those other scenarios could very likely play out if he did not do that now since we've learned that he had a knife what's really hilarious is watching the media try to bend over backwards and explain even that away so you can check this out this is a headline from the uh i, be I believe it's the milwaukee journal sentinel so this is one of the local newspapers so you can say here this is the headline jacob blake had a knife in the car but was otherwise unarmed wisconsin doj says as it releases the name of kenosha officer who shot him in the back so there's two things first of all shot him in the back removes all of the context removes everything that we've just talked about and then the second half of that is it says he's otherwise unarmed okay well then he's not unarmed because remember that the media kept pushing this narrative over and over again well an, un an unarmed black person well frankly it doesn't matter if they're unarmed if they did something that endangered the police officer uh i don't want to go case by case through all of the different scenarios where we talked about this but having an unarmed person shot by police officers is very very rare regardless of their color but nonetheless if they're going to run with this narrative of unarmed and that's going to be the standard well now all of a sudden they've got a guy who is armed and they're saying well he's otherwise unarmed uh yeah otherwise unarmed is not a thing it's like well he's holding a bazooka but he's otherwise unarmed well he's flying in an f-35 but he's otherwise unarmed other than that big one thing it would be like saying with uh well caleb cockwit he's not a talk show host i mean yeah he, he does the tactic show but he's otherwise not a talk show host okay well then what you just said makes me a talk show host <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense he's like well she's not pregnant she she is pregnant and she does have a baby growing inside her but other than that she's not pregnant well th then she's pregnant like trying to play games with this is just hilarious and watching the media try to do backflips and you know the level of mental gymnastics they have to engage in to try to justify that this was a shooting that they should be angry about or that the cop acted in some way that was incorrect even they realize that they don't really have a leg to stand on and they're just sort of grasping for straws at this point but they're not the only ones that did this in the reaction to the shooting of course there were several days of protest in the city of kenosha which involved by the way burning churches which i found pretty ironic as well the very uh, organization black lives matter that claims that they see a clansman basic basically behind every bush are now engaging in clan-like behavior 
I mean, they've been doing it for a while with the whole race war thing and thinking that race is the single most important thing. I mean, in that way, they've always been like the Klan. Oh, well, and the affiliation to the Democrat Party as well. Uh, even though theirs is slightly more open than their affiliation, the Democrats' affiliation to the Klan was. Only slightly, though. But on the other side of this, now they're also engaging in another time-honored practice of the Ku Klux Klan, burning down churches. Which also leads me to believe that it doesn't really have a whole lot to do with black lives because disproportionately black people care an awful lot more about church, on average, than most people in other racial demographics. I mean, it's just a simple fact. And the fact that there are people out there burning churches shows that those people really aren't all that concerned with black lives or what is important to black people. But nonetheless, I digress on that. Here is a... This is... I kind of... Yes, it's infuriating, but I laugh to hide the frustration. This is a, a, Kai, a Kiosh from CNN. Um, uh, Ka, the Chiron. Yeah, the Chiron from CNN. So you can see there the picture of the CNN reporter there doing his report. There's a giant blaze behind him and, uh, you know, burned out cars or whatever. And I love the, the Chiron here. Fiery but mostly peaceful protest after police shooting. Yeah, just like the whole thing with otherwise unarmed, that's not a mostly peaceful protest. There's no such thing as a mostly peaceful protest. If it's a mostly peaceful protest, then it is by definition a violent one. If it's a mostly peaceful protest, then it is by definition a riot. It is either a peaceful protest or a not peaceful protest. And this would be an example of a not peaceful protest. <laughs> just like if I have a bazooka in my hand, I'm not otherwise unarmed. I'm just armed. That's the way that this works. And by the way, I do say that it's hilarious watching CNN do these kind of backflips. And uh, there were, it does lead to some fantastic memes. So here was one that I saw that was sort of a play off of this. <laughs> you, can see, you can see the Titanic mind of Ocean Liner's first voyage, mostly successful. <laughs> and I mean, that's true. Because let's say, for example, that uh, you have a guy that woke up in the morning, went to work, had a pretty normal day, didn't bother anybody, and uh, then goes home and murders his wife and three kids. Okay, well, that guy had a mostly peaceful day. He probably only spent like, you know, 10, 20 minutes killing his family. But that's really not the point. He's not a mostly peaceful person, and he didn't have a mostly peaceful day if he murdered his family at the end of it. Like, yes, the majority of it was peaceful, but that is kind of, if you're saying that, is very clear you're trying to gloss over and ignore the most important, most obvious fact of what's going on here. That's not a mostly peaceful day. It's a violent day. Just like the, the, the protests are not mostly peaceful protests. They're just violent riots. That's all that it is here. And the media is trying to carry the water for it. Um, <laughs> with the city burning behind him, though, it does remind me of that gif of like the dog that he's sitting there with the coffee mug with the entire house burning down around him. He's like, yeah, this is fine. That <laughs> CNN just did the live action version <laughs> of that gif. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, Woke Brigade.